Hello. So in the last tutorial, I was saying something about how my um, house and wall weren't objects, and I didn't know how I was going to do the collision detection. Well, obviously there's always a way. So I went over to this program where I got all that code from. I said no fill, rect, rect, and I just manually like gauged uh, the approximate locations of the edges of these um, things that I don't want the character to be able to run into. So now I'm going to take those coordinates and I'm going back to my game that I'm making and I'm going to make some objects and I'm not going to draw anything with them. I'm just going to pass them into the collision detection. Now uh, if you look at the collide objects, it takes two objects, rect1 and rect2, that have a dot x, dot y, dot w, and dot h properties. Collide objects doesn't say anything about images. So while my uh, walls from the previous part of the game had images to display, I'm not actually intending to pass these new objects in to a draw function like draw wall that takes a uh, object with a dot image property. So, but I'm I am going to use like these as a template. So here's the two rectangles that I figured out earlier, and I'm going to take one of these and copy it, rename it, and now I'm going to modify the x property to be zero. Bet you can guess what this is going to be. And I'm just going to get rid of this. So now it's an object with the dimensions that I need. And I can <clears throat> go ahead and test that out by going down to the collide function, move boy is actually where we called the collide function from. And so if I'm on scene two, and I collide OBJ refers to the boy, because draw is passing that object into this function. And while 3 is the object that I just barely created, if I collide those two objects, then it looks like the way we're handling boy colliding with objects is to just reset uh, his coordinates to what they were before the collision. <clears throat> because boy is obj, obj is a reference to boy, and so temp x is obj's x coordinate as it comes into this function. So then the event listeners are able to mutate the boy's coordinates, and then the object collision, if it comes true, resets on those temp variables. <clears throat> Collide object is not defined. It helps if you spell things right. Computers are so good at that. I wish I had computer spelling skills. <laughs> now, I'm guessing the reason this is glitching out right now is because the character, the boy's uh, coordinates are already inside. So a lot of times you'll see collision detection where instead of um, doing just a solid reset, like it'll like actually calculate the coordinates outside of the object and move them outside. Mine's not that advanced. It's just a reset. And if you're already inside, then you're resetting to its already uh, to its previous coordinate, which is inside. So it's like never going to resolve, and now you just can't move at all. Because anytime you try to move, then 
this is still true, and so it just resets. Unless your velocity was such that, like pushing, like if he was like three pixels inside of this wall object, then I'm pushing down, I had a velocity of four, I was able to like go from one frame being inside to the next frame being outside. But that's not going to happen. So the solution is that when this condition is true, not only do I need to increase the scene, but I also need to move the boy's y coordinate. something. I'm pretty sure that will resolve it. Indeed. So let's go and set up that other object. I would be able to do it quicker now. So that he can't collide with Now he's materializing from one scene to the next inside of yet another object. Oh boy. Okay. So next I want to have a collision with that object right there because once I detect that collision then I'm gonna say I picked that up so let's figure out where that object is it's these coordinates right here it's where we're drawing the sword so I'll go up here to where all my walls are where are all my walls Okay, there they are. So much better to program things that, like, everything's, like, connected, like, why aren't I putting that uh, sword image in with the sword object so it's all wrapped up into one thing? Just because I am not planning this out and what not doing things on the fly. I think I'll actually go ahead and do that though. So I'll take the sword image and I'll put it in as an image property. 
spelling it IMG because I know I have a... Oh, that function. I don't like that function name. I should have that function be general so that it uh, draws... Draws boys and well, no, I'll leave the draw boy function alone. But um, I'm gonna change this to something more general, so that I don't get confused when I start passing various other objects that aren't walls into the draw wall function because it's there's nothing special in here about walls it's just going to take any old object and parse out its properties to the image function so now that I've gone and glitched out my program let's clear the errors and see if everything works Whatever I named that. Oh dear. Look at that glitch. So that has something to do with like the compiling process. Um, instead of doing a fresh compile, it somehow got the image from uh, when there's grass there too. So. Hopefully if we restart, now it'll draw again. Let's do some code collapse so I can see where I'm at. So the next thing that I want to do, now that I have my sword objectified, I can call collide objects on it. So as I'm moving my boy, my boy object around and I'm detecting for collisions, I'm also going to detect for the collision with the sword. And I'm going to have to make up this bool, but as sword is not defined, I have not defined that yet. And why don't we go ahead and increase the scene yet again? Maybe that's the whole point of standing out in front of his house is just collect the sword. So it froze, so that means that it worked. So now we can go back into draw and create the next scene. I want the sword to like follow him around and I'm kind of chuckling to myself because yet again 
this way of programming is going to present its own set of challenges. First of which is that it's freezing right now. Why could it be freezing? Oh, I did not bring this function down. So um, one way we could do this is to change the draw object function to move the sword around, but I already like made that like a very specific uh, general thing. I don't want to specify it towards swords now. Uh, we could change one of these functions. This one could like move the sword around or I don't know, we could make the sword more linked to the boy have it be like one of his properties. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to fix it, but kind of getting annoyed by this inefficient method of programming things. So I'm going to leave this tutorial right here, and I hope that it gave you some ideas on how to create games. Thanks for watching.